Hi everyone, this is Mahabeli from the American University in Cairo, and today we're going to be demonstrating um, an activity that's part of the Theater of the Oppressed, uh, that Sarita is going to talk to us, uh, but I'm going to let Tina and Alex introduce themselves first, and then Sarita can introduce herself and the activity, and we'll try it out for you guys. Go ahead, Tina. I'm Tina Pippin, and I teach religious studies at Agnes Scott College in Decatur, Georgia, USA. I'm Alex Fink. I work in the Youth Studies Department of the University of Minnesota in Minneapolis, Minnesota in the United States. Hello, everyone. My name is Sarita Shukla. <clears throat> I'm a lecturer at the School of Educational Studies, University of Washington, Bothell, USA. So tell us about the activity, Sarita, and how you learned it, and we'll try it out together. Okay. So the activity that we will be trying out um, is called One, Two, Three Bradford. And um, so I learned this activity. Uh, I attended this wonderful session that was held by Teresa Ronquillo uh, from the Embody Change. And um, what they do is um, they do a lot of um, embodied activities. Um, the session that I attended and, and really thinking about how do we do it online? And so I um, really love the activity and I'm excited to share um, this activity with the group here. So can you describe it? And then we'll just start doing it. We've practiced it once before. You might need to describe it a little bit better to your students if it's the first time, but go ahead and say. So um, in this activity, um, the focus is really, um, um, the way that Teresa described it was a de-mechanizing um, activity. And so really trying to get away from our default um, way of being in the world. And typically this activity would be played in pairs. And, um, and, and so you in, in a pair, you decide who would be person one and person two. And then um, starting with person, um, or we'll call them person A. So starting with person A uh, would say one, and then person B would say two. Um, person three would say, um, person, a would say three. So it, it goes between person A and B back and forth. So one, two, three. And so you'd keep doing that till you have this sense of a rhythm. Um, and then you'd move on to the next round wherein um, who say if person A gets the one, they would then replace uh, the number one with some kind of a uh, whole body movement. Um, it could be some kind of an action that they do. And so then the one would then get replaced with this um, sound and movement um, um, gesture. Um, and then it would then be person B saying two and then person A saying three. And then when person B gets the number one, instead of saying one, they would replace it with that activity. Um, and then you do um, the, you know, instead of one, it would be that action and then two and then three. Um, and then till you get sort of like a rhythm for that again, and then you'd replace the two with the, um, with the action, um, you know, just you'd come up with some kind of a whole body movement. And again, in the moment, right? Um, and um, you would also need to pay attention to what, uh, what actions are being replaced for which numbers um, so that you can do those actions when it's your turn uh, to say that number. Um, and so you do that for one, two, three. Um, but since there are the four of us, um, we'll, you know, in our practice, we tried it with numbers from numbers one through five. It was pretty fun to do it. Uh, you really have to be in the moment, like this whole mindfulness piece, um, uh, along with uh, mirroring, you know, the other person's action. So all of that goes hand in hand. Yeah, I think it takes a lot of focus and that's something that I think students struggle with online is to focus and I think it would be a great activity to do in a class. And so just to make sure I've got this right, the number has to be one bigger than the group size. So if there are two people, you the number is three, if there are four people, the number is five, so that there's always a shift in who is number one and two each time, right? So the way that Teresa did it, uh, she just had us do it in pairs from numbers one through three. However, um, I think maybe five is the maximum that um, you, you know you should go in a group because it's be very difficult otherwise. <laughs> you know, just 
yet it's, it's quite a cognitive load. Uh, when we just did it in a practice session, I was like, well, which number am I? When do I go? And uh, so, yeah. Did you do it in breakout rooms or were you just the ones who are doing it are focused and everybody else's cameras off and then you switch the pairs to some other pair? We did it in breakout rooms. And after that, we got into like the main room and everybody just enacted um, their, their replacement for the one. Their sequence. Yeah, their okay. sequence. So for now, let's just do it, the four of us, as if we're in a breakout room learning yeah. it, right? Okay, so Sarita, we're going to do the same order we did before, Sarita, Tina, Alex, me, and that's something obviously you'd have to agree on just before you start, right? Okay, go ahead. All right, so one, two, three, four, five, two, three, four, five, one. Two, three, four, five, two, three, four, five, three. Four, five, four, there was an action, like three, okay. Four, what's it? You can do it. Yeah, that's good. So that's an action right there. Yeah. Okay. Four. <laughs> Five. Five. And so that, that's, that's the routine that we came up with, right? For the one, two, three, four, five. It was so challenging. <laughs> I had to remember when I was going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. So are we supposed to help each other when someone gets stuck, give them time? Like... That, that is a good question. So um, when, when we did it in pairs in Teresa's workshop, um, we kind of like, you know, I thought the one, two, three was much more easier than the one through five, this is just, this adds a level of cognitive load. Um, um, but somehow I found it that to be more easier, but I think it's a good idea to help each other out, right? Um, it, it's again, like community building and then that, you know, that you're working together with other folks. And so I think it's it just this share that we are in this space together and that we can help each other out, I think is, yeah. 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 One of the things we talked about before we recorded that we said we'd mention is about adaptations in case someone has either connectivity issues or whatever reason they can't turn on their camera, is that perhaps they can type the action in the chat when it's their turn instead of uh, saying it. And the other thing that I, and I, my connectivity is on and off today, so it really helps when people do their hand with their audio because sometimes one of them is cutting off either the videos frozen or their sound is not coming through for some weird reason. And so when someone does that, even if I can't hear them, I can at least see the hand and I notice that their video's on and they've just spoken. So I know where I'm at in my, um, in my order. Can you think of other adaptations? Well, as Sarita demonstrated, I think that you could probably do this with your cameras off and with sounds. So if each person mm. introduced a sound, I mean, maybe that would feel more challenging in some ways even than performing it visually, but that the sound would be a fun, different way of approaching it. Mm. Maybe if every, one of the things Sarita said at the beginning was about using your whole body, 
And I like that there's a woohoo and there's this, which has a sound and an action so that even if your camera is off, I could hear the click and probably know that you just clicked your fingers. Um, so that, that is helpful as well. Um, so yeah, I, I think you'd have to just notice if anybody is not fully able-bodied and as everyone else to make sure that whatever you're doing um, fits the, the people who can are in the room. Okay, uh, so you would use this what, as a warm-up activity at the beginning of class? Right. I'm kind of thinking, <clears throat> I guess I'd, I'd use it at different points, depending on, on where I see um, the energy of my class. I could possibly use this as an interactivity, um, but I'm thinking um, this might probably come at the beginning of um, uh, a class session, not, not at the very first class meeting, but, oh, you know, no, yeah. subsequent class meetings um, when students you know, and, and we do talk about challenging content just to take a break from that. Um, this might be a good sort of getting in the moment uh, activity. Yeah. yeah, speaking of breaks, if you have a longer class, that's two or three hours and you take a break coming back from break, this could be an energizing thing. It's kind of like also, it's, it's a kind of stretching, but it's a interconnected empathetic type of mirroring uh, body thing that just sort of, this using your body while you're online is really important because we're used to just sitting there and smiling yeah. the whole time, which is really stressful, but we don't realize it. Yeah. I wonder, okay. Does anyone else have any other comments? Go ahead. Well, yeah. It could be connected to content, if that would work at all. It may not. I just, I'm just thinking of this on the fly, um, where you might be teaching, um, you know, some kind of ethics or human rights, and you go peace, justice, love you know, you have words for mm. the reading or something else that you switch in and out. Cool. I like that. What if we also did peace, but we also gave it a body movement to represent mm -hmm. it? So say like peace and love and I don't know, uh, cooperation or something like that. That would be so cool. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, and so I think it would, with, with young kids, that would be so cool. Go ahead, Sarita. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was just, I was just saying that um, I just feel so much more connected with everyone in the group as a result of doing this activity. Um, and um, it also builds empathy too, right? Uh, and at the same time, you kind of have to figure out when the, the, the number changed for the action uh, and that you need to incorporate it too. Uh, so it, it just felt like a very good mindfulness exercise. And I'm like here, like a 100%. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to stop recording um, and we'll uh, pause and do another activity. Okay. Oh, that was my husband who came in. <laughs>